Aloha. Today we are taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowe. We are coming to you from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. Today, I'd like to introduce a United States Army veteran who served our country and is now retired to serve our veterans even further. Let me introduce you to Donovan A. Lazarus, who is the AMBETS Department of Hawaii State Commander. Aloha and welcome Donovan A. Lazarus. Aloha, Wendy, it's so great to be here with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share some of what we do at the AMBETS uh, Center here in Hawaii and uh, all the support that we do have uh, from organizations that we collaborate with and, uh, and people like you who help to get the word out, especially on a day like today, a National PTSD Day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Before we get started, yes, I want to acknowledge that today is June 27th, the National PTSD Awareness Day. So let us honor those who are suffering from PTSD and let's bring more light and awareness to this subject so that more out there can learn about it and understand it and help others deal with it. So Donovan, please tell us firstly about the AMBETS membership and how it got started here in Hawaii. Or no, uh, in general, tell us how it got started. Yeah, sure. yeah, in well, general. You know, the AMBETS organization, and I don't know if you have the slide to, to show, um, there were three different names in, in that we've had, you know. So the original name was American Veterans World War II. So in 1943, veterans from World War II started to make it back home, and they were on 12 different college campuses, and they wanted to have their own organization. So eventually in 1944, they got together in Missouri and started the AMVETS, or American Veterans World War II. Uh, later in 1947, President Truman signed proclamation or uh, correction of uh, public law 17, making it a congressional chartered organization. The AMVETS organization was only open to World War II veterans at the time. So later the name was changed again to allow Korean and Vietnam veterans to join, which for the third time it was changed in 1984 um, to American veterans or AMVETS. And, you know, that has uh, caught uh, some people by surprise while well, we keep changing the name, things like that. But with the Congressional Charter, we need to have a certain or maintain a certain number of membership, meaning service members, uh, veterans that have served since World War II. It opened up uh, in 1984 to allow just anyone to serve the AMVETS in the AMVETS organization, whether you're a National Guardsman or Reservist, Coast Guardsman, whether you've been deployed to war or not you can join. So it's the most inclusive veteran service organization in the United States. Um, here in Hawaii, I was a recovery team leader doing the missing in action mission uh, going to uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, mainly Southeast Asia was mine. It's a global mission, but it really started from after Vietnam, trying to recover a lot of our POWs in missing in action. So in 2005, I was a recovery team leader. 2006, it was my turn to take our team to the AMBETS National Convention to provide update on our recovery operations and all. Uh, there at the National Convention, which was in Las Vegas at the time, the National Commander asked if I would, with my team, to start the uh, AMBETS here in Hawaii, mainly because of the USS Arizona Memorial. Wow. So superintendent at the time, Superintendent Lentz, needed to resurface the wall. So sometimes it's just to resurface, you know, the marble shrine wall that all the names were on for our 1177 service members that were uh, entombed there and just needed someone on the ground. So the JPAC then joined POWMI Accounting Command, which I was a recovery team leader for, like I said, the name is now changed to DPAA, Defense POW Accounting Agency. So we got back and we decided to do it. So we started the AMVETS here to um, help raise the funds, resurface the wall. In 2014, though, we had to rebuild the whole wall. And that was $350,000 we had to raise. But that was a national wow. effort. That's yeah, a so, lot of work that you yeah, are Yes, it's a lot of work. And, a lot of work. Know. Wow. And so, you know, Donovan, about how many AMVET members reside here in Hawaii? 
Yeah, so we just have over 500. So we're pretty small here in Hawaii because, um, you know, we're an all volunteer organization. Before we were just active duty service members from all branch of service. And, uh, you know, some of us uh, were law enforcement officers and we just wanted to keep it that way. So we weren't looking for numbers. We just wanted guys that wanted to give back from the heart, so to speak and wow. uh, like-minded so the arizona was the main reason and the junior rtc program and rtc program at uh manoa was the other thing being that we had a charter we could have uh present these medals that the, the uh, cadets would wear on their uniform and certificates grants sometimes scholarships things like that wow. and uh, here, here in hawaii the junior rtc program is pretty large it's 24 high schools in the program and University of Hawaii now have three detachments. At the time, they had only two, Army and um, Air Force. Now they have a Navy detachment. They stood up just over two years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a lot of activities and serving a lot of young and uh, existing uh, veterans uh, serving. So we're very grateful for all that MBATS does for the veterans and the soldiers and the soldiers to be. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I know that there are many active veterans here in Hawaii. I know of one personally, and it's John Henry Phoenix. So please share with us a little bit about what John Henry's involvement is with the MBATS. Oh, sure. You know, so John Henry, um, well, I always call him Dr. Felix, you know, for respect, because he's done so many things in our country and around the world. He's truly a national treasure and global leader, for sure. Uh, he mentors us. He's the reason why I probably still do what I do um, as a volunteer with the AMVETS. So John Henry joined the AMVETS back in 1985, just after the AMVETS had rebuilt the entire Marble Shrine Wall, the first time they rebuilt it after building, it, uh, building the wall in 1962. In 1984, he had to rededicate the wall after um, raising $250,000 and rebuilding it, and he was part of the ceremony. But during the building of the Arizona Memorial itself, he was the chief of staff and that oversee the architecture, the building of the Arizona. So he had great ties there. So um, then later in 1986, a huge ceremony still, you know, unveiled the wall. And at Punchball as well with the Memorial Clarion, which is a living memorial there. It's the bells that chimes in the evenings at 1600 to remind everyone of the sacrifice, the service members uh, that are laid to rest there. So he's always been involved, being that we're doing so much here in Hawaii, the AMVETS, although he didn't have a AMVETS post, but the National Headquarters was leading these efforts. And um, John Henry was part of putting these events together and all. So he was very involved from then. Um, I met him in mainly around uh, about five years after we started the AMBITS here. I would see him at the ceremonies and met him uh, briefly for photos and things like that. In 2012, he invited me to come to the uh, signing of a proclamation from Governor Abercrombie uh, for John Inner Felix Day. He donated 35 acres of land there at the Veterans State Cemetery in Kaneohe. Uh, a few years ago, about four years ago, he, uh, John, uh, Dr. Felix asked if I would uh, take over the uh, biomodulator program, which treats veterans with chronic pain, which is a huge deal because uh, John Henry, uh, Dr. Felix, is the chair, co-chair with General David Bromlett for the State Task Force for Homeless Veterans. He knows why veterans tend to become homeless and they try to alleviate the pain and suffering and uh you know with the pharmaceuticals they do become dependent whether it's on drugs uh you know pharmaceuticals or alcohol i should say um and so the biomodulator it it's not abrasive non-pharmaceutical and it treats for chronic pain it also helps renews the cells in the body which was introduced to him by robin Rohr. And um, who is our admin person for the biomodulator committee and former or, or, or late General Hank Stackpole, who was Marine Forces Pacific Commander back in the 90s, an incredible man. And uh, since then, uh, we have the uh, Henry, uh, uh, Felix uh, Stackpole Legacy Project. And so he asked us to maintain that and try and uh, continue to study on the biomodulator which is currently going on right now. 
uh, you know, it's just an incredible opportunity. And really, we have biomodulators on the ninth floor at Triple Army Medical Center that are treating our service members. We have uh, Dr. Shinsani, who is treating our veterans with those. Last year, around October, we got the VA to start providing the biomodulators to our veterans. So we have veterans here, part of the AMBETS, two of them that receive the biomodulators from the VA. So we don't have to raise money for that. The VA will provide it. It's also uh, recommended by the VA, uh, FDA. And so it's, uh, you know, it's a huge deal. It and, is. Um, yeah, um, Henry, he was he's doing a, yeah, a lot. He's, he's done a lot and he's doing a lot. And a great shout out for the donation of the acreage for the memorial, the Veterans Memorial Park in Kanyoni. Many people don't know that, but his plaque stands there. And yes, we need to really remember him every time we go and visit our loved ones there at that park. It's truly beautiful. So yes. being that today is National PTSD Awareness Day, I wanted to share this photo of our late United States Senator Daniel K. Akaka, Ed Kubo, Ron Young, and yourself as you guys celebrated National PTSD Awareness Day. Where was this uh, celebrated at? Oh, right? yes, that was at K-Bay, that chapel there is on Kaneohe Marine Corps Base in Kaneohe. And, uh, you know, we had active duty service members and veterans alike there. Senator Akaka is just incredible, like uh, Dr. Felix and our late Senator Inouye. Those are our mentors. They, they have led the way. And uh, Senator Akaka always, always come out to our national PTSD uh, Awareness Day. And uh, that was actually what, like eight years ago, uh, 2015. And uh, there, Judge Kubo, an uh, incredible man that led the specialty court for veterans. And on the uh, right, if you're looking at the photo, that's uh, Ron Lamb. Ron Lamb is my number two guy. Um, he's the vice president for a service foundation or the, uh, the, the ambulance department. He's our first vice commander. Wow. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's just an incredible uh, experience being there with service members and veterans. They're, they're sharing their stories, and, and it's just really impactful and come up with different things or tools that we could help uh, to cope with uh, some of the experiences that some of us have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so much influence in that one photo. Uh, it's incredible of all the things that you all accomplished there. And so really, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I would like you to share with us, what is the mission of the AMBETS? Well, the AMBETS really were advocates, you know, for veterans, uh, actually for active duty service members as well. Because the active duty military really can't go and advocate for uh, or lobby for or pay raises and things like that. So I was really ignorant to what the AMVETS does when I was at their national convention and they were sharing uh, what they do. And, you know, mainly we cannot forgot, forget our World War II veterans because we'll be forgotten if we, we do. And it's very important, too. So really, we provide uh, advocacy represented. Uh, for the uh, different areas across the country see that goes to the capital and uh we used to call it storm the capital we don't do that anymore since january 11th but we go and we visit representatives and really help to share some of the things we're doing in the community and need to pass legislation uh, besides providing services and assistance for veterans family alike uh, really, that's in a nutshell. I, I know I, I get tend to get pretty long-winded here. And I, I've been doing this since 2006, and it's just, you know, one of those things, a lot of passion. I, a lot I, of passion. I, I can hear it. I can feel it. And that's what drives, you know, the success of um, carrying out your mission. And it is a great mission to serve veteran, the veterans and the active military in procuring their earned entitlements. Mm -hmm. I think that is outstanding, and I know that um, you all still do it, and that's kind of what leads us into the, the topic of today. Um, let's talk a little bit about PTSD. So I want to just ask you, what is PTSD? Well, PTSD is really a mental health problem uh, for some people uh, develop after experiencing like um, or witnessing a life-threatening uh, event. Uh, you know, it's uh, experiencing a lot of sometimes... Uh, and uh, like the Institute of uh, Violence, uh, Abuse and Trauma, IVAT conference that we just had here 
um, yeah, your, your experience, violence, abuse, um, trauma, you know, uh, we, we, we sometimes just think it's only service members that experience, uh, uh, PTSD, or, uh, I, I like to say post-traumatic stress, because really we want to drop the D and, and not so much a disorder because veterans tend to not want to get in a program or even, you know, they just don't want to consider themselves as having a disorder. So that's really why we we really trying to, you know, uh, in a sense, uh, do away with that stigma, right? Because that's will help service members and veterans alike to uh, you know seek help, right? So um, the um, experiences that women also experience and children from like uh, sexual abuse, um, child abuse, you know, they develop PTSD as well. You know, and uh, fire, first responders, firefighters, folks in the healthcare, uh, especially if they work in the ER room, emergency room, they experience PTS. But um, yeah, for our service members, um, mostly uh, those of us that's been to war and uh, seen a lot and uh, to deal with um, horrific conditions, sometimes it's, you know, as if a first responder would have experienced something right here on u.s soil you know uh, sometimes we have accidents vehicles roll over explosions and loss of life through training incidents so you don't have to have been to war to experience or uh, some of these uh, violence and um, incredible um, life-threatening experiences yeah. for sure for sure i mean we uh, we all know that with all the horrific uh, occurrences at schools or even at homes yes. um you're going to see something you shouldn't see and already you're traumatized and that's what we are being labeled as P having PTS. And so, yes, you do not have to go away and um, to war to experience that. Right. But, you know, now that we understand a little bit about it, how can we combat this illness? Well, it really is like we're doing right now, more public awareness, removing the stigma, helping folks to come forward and talk, just to be there. You know, we hashtag be there a lot because we like a day like today, what we do, we try to be there for each other. We know some of our buddies that uh, you just have to call today. Yes. You know, you just have to make that call. Right. So, so just being with them, loving them, and just yeah, like, that's one of the things we, we, you know, we, we do. We try to do it on a daily basis, especially here at our Veterans Center uh, through pure and peer support you know peer to peer support uh one-on-one -on -one, um just being there listening hearing sometimes it's just working on a project together it could be um like what the va was teaching here yesterday you know canvas painting you know um those recreational therapies and um different adaptive sports program that are out the VA offer really do help. We have them here. This is an approved site here at our AMBETS location for, um, you know, uh, recreation of therapy and adaptive sports for the VA. It helps. Being active helps. And uh, one of the things why we try to encourage folks to join the different groups, veterans group, because they, you know, you're a veteran, you're, uh, you tend to understand what another veteran is experiencing or service members. Uh, we have many bikes clubs that meets here at our center. Pretty much every one of them meets here if they're a member of Street Bikers United and if they want to be able to ride in a group. They need a permit, so they need to meet here. Every first Sunday of the month at 09 at our AMBIT Center, the uh, presidents and the treasurer of each club. Now, they ride for camaraderie, it's therapy as well. You know, they pay for their membership. They actually pay to be part of the club. People see your bikers riding and they think, well, they're not really, they're just making a lot of noise and they're racing. And this, I don't ride myself, but I do know there's no camaraderie like in the bikers clubs. And I encourage guys to join if they ride uh, the bikers club, consider it. And they're there for each other for active duty guys, lots of active duty guys or in these groups, and of course, the other veteran service organizations like VFW, DAV, um, Disabled American Veterans, and uh, American Legions. I'm a life member of all of them, and I encourage uh, folks to do that, to be there, share your story, and um, don't hesitate to seek help. The VA has a, a mental health line and a crisis line. 
988. If you, a veteran or a service member having some issues, can call that number. You don't have to be a veteran. You could be still on active duty. Call that number. And of course, we're a national PTSD um, center and provide uh, services as well. Wow. So it seems that you offer quite a bit of different programs. So someone just has to reach out to, I guess, the AMVET Center, which is on 5001 Iroquois Avenue. And uh, if they go and visit the center there, I'm sure that someone can direct them to um, the services that they're uh, that suits their needs and their interests so that, first of all, they want to come out and enjoy what they're doing with like-minded people and the support that you all offer there. Is that correct? Donovan? Oh, absolutely. You know, we have a beekeeping program that is like Colonel Gatz and Gregory D. Gatz and some know him from the movie Battleship. Uh, we served together in the command group at Yusuf back in 2000 before 9-11 and after 9-11. And later he, you know, was reassigned uh, to Schofield and Barracks here in Hawaii, and then from there to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, where he deployed to Iraq, and then IED took both legs. You know, when he comes here, we have to take him to the beekeeping uh, bee farm, right? And mm -hmm. beekeeping is a huge deal. He's fascinated by it. It's like horses for equine therapy or yes. having a dog. It's a huge deal. Um, we had a Marine that came home and he just wouldn't leave his home for months, he said. He learned about our beekeeping program, gave me a call, and uh, we got him to the bee farm, and, you know, he's been volunteering there ever since. So sometimes it's just to get them to come out to an event to help participating, setting up, right, for whatever it may be. We have a lot of youth-related programs here. Veterans tend to love to come and support the um, softball teams that we have here and the uh, scout program. We have six scout troops that meet here at our center, three of which we sponsor, so they have their charter. We have seven little league teams or uh, girls softball teams that plays here at our facility. And besides the array of programs that the actual VA has here for uh, wounded warriors, um, the uh, fitness program, workout program, arts and craft, and, uh, karaoke you know and they actually sing karaoke here and um you know now we're getting ready to start up pickleball here and basketball uh skills that we you know <laughs> taught to or work with some of her service members it's her goal to have two horses out here for equine therapy because it's a, it's huge it's an unbelievable when we come back from war more deployment, uh, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan, and we're at Fort Campbell, for example, it's mandatory that we go to the stable there for equine therapy. It's just an incredible thing that horses uh, are able to do. With yeah. these, I'll just say that, you know, Jasmine, who is one of the uh, person that helped us with our bee farms, and really, she actually runs it. She is up her veterans there and all. She uh explain it really in, in such a great way. Uh, we tend from the trauma that occurred in the past. So it's like, we're always in the past. When we're working with bees, we're here in the present. Because right. you know, we have to be very calm. And, um, and that's the key word right there. You have yeah. to be calm. To be because... in the present. Yeah. Yes, yes. Be, the bees get, can uh, feel uh, you. Uh, and if you're not yeah. in the calm, they yeah. will back. And so, yes, that's so critical. And mm -hmm. I think that bee therapy is so crucial to your programs, as well as the equine therapy. Mm -hmm. And I know that we're trying to implement the horticulture therapy as well. And mm -hmm. so there's so many positive things that they can all um, come to your center and get introduced to something of their interest. And so I'm Absolutely. so grateful mm -hmm. that you have all of these um events and uh, opportunities for them so please if someone is listening to this show call the MBET center and um, their number is 808-888-0410 and they are located at 5001 Iroquois Avenue right there uh, down Eva, uh, down at the end of Eva Beach so please get in touch with them I know that they can help in some way but real quickly, Donovan, I just want to ask, so say I know someone that has symptoms um, of PTS PTSD and they are in denial. How could I get them help or how can I get them to you? You know, the um, 
the uh, PTSD center, right, has a self-test online. You can't take it for them, but they can take it. You know, the National Center of PTSD, right? And it's only five questions. And they can, uh, you know, maybe you can encourage them to take it. But if if they're, they're not willing to um, do that, they can um, just give us a call. Coin Veterans Network. They have a clinic in Milani. We have partnered with them. They provide counseling, group sessions to anyone we sent there. Even if they're not a veteran, they'll see them. Janet Coven, uh, Covington is the director there. And we've sent folks there that are not veterans and they saw them. They will not hesitate to do that. Whether you're on active duty, because they provide the services for active duty service members, but they also do it for veterans as well. And, um, you know, it's just to... Get them to share their stories if they can. If they don't want to, that's okay. But uh, maybe you invite them to take the test just to, you know, maybe you give them the information and they decide later they may want to do that. When they're share ready. The contact and that's, information, yeah. and that helps as well. Right. Just like anything else, when they're ready and they want help. But the main thing is that you go alongside with them, love them, let them feel the trust in you. And then they become ready quicker because they have someone right there by their side. So, mm -hmm. you know, your AMBAD mission is to serve veterans and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the active military and procuring their earned entitlements. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that many veterans appreciate what the AMBADs have been doing and will do and all that you stand for. So continue to service, yes, the veterans and the ones affected with PTS. And uh, we will just uh, continue to promote what you're doing out there. But for now, Donovan, our show has come to a close. But first of all, let me thank the United States Army veteran, Donovan, Donovan A. Lazarus, for serving our country and currently serving the underserved and our veterans. I am Wendy Lowe and will return in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo, Donovan. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.